and welcome back to another Tech Minds video. So this is going to be the last part of my QO100 all-in-one transceiver build videos. Uh, so I've pretty much got everything working now and I've, I've changed a few things since the last build and I'll go through that with you. Now, if you haven't seen any of the other build videos, I'll quickly go through what each section is for uh, and then I'll talk more about it. OK, so let's first start with the power section. So you may have seen in the recent videos, I had the buck converters or step down converters, which had an LCD screen on them. Uh, now, the whole of this is powered via 28 volt input here, which also powers the amplifier, um, not from here, but from a separate power supply. So we've got 28 volts coming in here. I had three step down transformers here, two of which had LCDs. Now, I, I came across some issues where the Pi was freezing and it would lock up. And I have a feeling it was down to the fact that they couldn't provide enough current. So I changed to these fixed blocks that I got off of Amazon. They're about 15 pound each. So this one brings it down to 12 volts. This one brings it down to five volts. The 12 volt one I think is rated at three amps. And this one, the five volts rated at 10 amps. Obviously I'm not going to touch anywhere near that, but at least it's enough current and since putting these in, I haven't had any problems at all. So this is the power. So 12 volt, 5 volt, and then this little down converter here is 18 volts, which is just used on the LMB. Uh, we have some, obviously, some wiring connections here. Doesn't look particularly neat, I know, but um, it's the best that I could get it with, a, with the wires going everywhere. Uh, then we have the LMB connection coming in. This is a bias T. Um, we have 12 or 18 volts switched to here. This puts it into either vertical or horizontal polarization. Uh, vertical with 12 volts and, and horizontal with 18 volts. That's switched via one of the relays here. Here we have just an RF splitter because I want to take this signal without the DC um, to the mini tuner here for receiving DATV. Uh, and then I've got the Pluto over here which for the receive side is going to be using for the narrow band. Moving across over here, we have the network switch. This is a gigabit uh, network switch, so no issues with the uh, um, bandwidth there. Um, Leo Bodner GPS DO, which uh, feeds 40 megs into the Pluto to keep it bang on uh, steady. Over here is the driver amplifier, um, which goes between the Pluto and the main amplifier now originally i had a board exposed here which was the sg labs variable power driver board but um i then put it into a metal box like this and some testing that i was doing at the weekend and i discovered there was some noise on the output which gave me some horrible kind of shoulders on the datv transmission so i changed it out to uh, an amsat uk uh, filtered S-band board, uh, amplifier board. You can get them on the AMSAT UK website if you want to buy one. You have to build it yourself and their surface mount components. Um, so that takes the one milliwatt from here, puts it up to about 50 milliwatts, which then goes off to the amplifier through the N-type connection at the back. So the Pluto is being used for TX for narrowband and TX for DATV for wideband as well. So that's why we've only got one um, RF out path because it's uh, all using the same amp and same dish whereas the input that's coming in uh, it has to be split so that I can when I change polarization I can still receive on both at the same time not that I'd use both at the same time you'll also notice here that this is the mini tuner inside here I've got a video dedicated on the mini tuner uh, on the channel if you want to see that I've put that in a it back in its box as well um, purely because uh, I had an issue where when I was transmitting on DATV I, uh, uh, I had an issue where the receive signal would go down um, so I ended up putting everything or these items into in back into boxes just to try and eliminate any RF within here um, but it actually turned out that it was a it was a 75 ohm coax coming from the uh, LMB to here it had an issue with it somehow. So anyway, so that was sorted out. 
Um, so as we come across here, this is a board uh, which does some Vera board with uh, three voltage sensors and a thermistor sensor and just another voltage sensor here. Uh, there's a whole reason why I'm doing it like this using three different ones. But in short, these are running on an I2C bus which is connected to the Pi. Now this is a Pi 3B plus and it's just got one of these nice little heat sinks on the top it uh, with a fan underneath and it works really well it keeps it really cool at about 20 to 29 degrees yeah without that it goes above 50 because it's doing quite a lot of work um it's 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 basically running a script to pull the leo bodner gps for its stats for pll lock and sat lock it's also running the software uh, to decode the mini tuner or the DATV from the mini tuner and it's also running node red as well so which is which is quite nice now the Pluto is actually connected to the uh, Pi but it's only using it for power um, there is no data lines connected it's just the five volts it just made it nice and easy and I don't have to run other cables up to up to here up to these five volt here um, the Pluto is running off of Ethernet, as you can see here. So the two USB ports on the Pluto, one is the power, which goes off to here, one of the USB ports on the Pi, and the other one is just this OTG USB adapter, which gives me a, a gigabit LAN connection. So hopefully no issues with bandwidth there. The Pi also connects directly to um, this um, HID relay so we've got two relays and on the dashboard I have uh, one for transmit and um, basically my PTT all that does is enable the 12 volts to go to the driver ramp or not and um, that's how I kind of kill the signal uh, the other relay switches between the 12 volts and 18 volts um, and then just goes straight to this uh, bias T uh, board here so it's nice and easy to switch between horizontal and vertical as I explained earlier. So with all the case put together, this 2U chassis, um, I stuck a couple of labels on it uh, on the rear just so I could remember what each of the ports were. Obviously it was quite self-explanatory, but you never know. I might forget in my old age, but there we go. So now it's time to go and put it in the conservatory and wire it up. So here we go, this is all connected up now. That's the power supply. Um, I do want to find a box for this actually because obviously it's got exposed mains wires. Luckily nobody really comes in here. That's uh, everything all connected up, which is quite nice. Um, that then goes off to the amplifier, which is just sat there at the moment. And uh, I've just put one of these on. Just so you can see like the temperature. I haven't put a sensor in here. I should really put a sensor in, but um, a one new addition actually, when I was having issues with the uh, receive going on transmit, I bought one of these little filters. Um, probably works, probably does what it's supposed to do, but I didn't need it in the end, but I've left it in just in case. So that's all set up. Okay. Now I'll show you the dish. So it's a 1.2 meter dish. Uh, I've got it ducked right onto the ground using this bit of hardboard here to hold it down. I do want to put some concrete in, which I will do eventually. I've got some post mix, that's postcrete, to put that in properly. And then, as you've probably seen before, the Helix with a 3D printed ice cream cone over the top. Oh, and I changed the this here. This is uh, LDF 250, I think, something like that. So it's a bit of a shorter run than the coax that I was using. Okay, so the first demonstration, which I'll show you, will be DATV of PON2 QO100. So the first thing we do, we're going to get the receive working first. Uh, over on the bottom left hand corner, I'm using something called a long mind client, which is connected to the Raspberry Pi over Ethernet, and then the Pi is connected to the DATV tuner. So first thing we need to do is on the top right of the screen, this is the dashboard that I've put together in Node-RED, and I'm going to switch it to DATV, 
that will, will then put the voltage up to around 18 volts for the LMB to tell it to go to horizontal. So we should now be able to click on any of these transmissions down here on the bottom left. But if I click on that one, we should be able to see it. And so, okay, we've got reception. So we now want to transmit. So first thing to do is find a clear frequency. So I'm just going to look, obviously you can tell where it's clear because there's no uh, peaks and someone's just disappeared there. If I hold my mouse over the segments down the bottom, the small and large segments show the symbol rate that's supported on this particular channel. So I'm going to go with the larger one. On here, I can go 250, 333 or 500. On the lower down channels, I can go up as high as 1,000 or even 1,500 kilo cycles like the beacon if I wanted to. But for this demonstration, I'll just keep it to 333. It's what we all keep to on the, on the net. So 2407.5 is free. So there's nobody, nobody here. Can't select it. So then on the top left, I'm using a program called DATV Easy. And what this does, it takes the video uh, from OBS. Now this is OBS. It's like a tool for mixing video. So this is just a test card and I can go to a different scene. Hello. So that's like the video, that's the webcam. And then obviously I can run like videos or go to the second screen, etc., etc. So I'll just leave the test card running at the moment. So I'll put that on the other screen. So DATV easy. There's a whole load of settings on here that you have to check. I mean, you can look at this if you want. You can pause it and have a look if you want to play around with it. So in essence, this takes the video and audio from OBS and it sends it to the Pluto. Now on the configuration tab of DATV easy, this is where you choose the firmware type. You can just use standard firmware if you want to. So as soon as I click start on DATV Easy, let's wait for the two green lights. And then it says buffer nominal. So nominal means that we're not getting any underflows or overflows and we're getting a nice stream to the Pluto. So it's this nice video stream. So at the moment, the Pluto is actually transmitting on 2407.750. However, we are not actually transmitting up to the satellites. You can see here, there's no peaks down the bottom of the long min client. And that's because my driver board is turned off. Now, as soon as I click driver on, we should see a peak appear and then I can tune to my channel. So I'm going to click driver on. There's my transmission. If I click on it, it should then start to decode it and you should see my test card appear. And there we go. That's, uh, that's my test card appearing. And uh, if I wanted to switch the camera, I could just then go over to here. And uh, well, there we go. That's my, uh, that's my webcam. And that's working. Okay, and then if I want to then de-key, i.e. stop transmitting, I'll just click press driver off and you'll see my signal disappear here. And there we go. I've stopped transmitting. The Pluto is still transmitting into the driver amplifier, but obviously because there's no power going to it, it's not driving the final amplifier, the big one that you saw earlier. Okay, so let's have a look at how we operate SSB. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to stop DATV easy because we're not going to be using that. What I now need to do is change the Pluto because the Pluto is running special firmware. I now need to change it so that it's in pass through mode and not DATV mode. So you can do this, you see, with uh, this firmware. So I click pass through, click apply settings. I do like to reboot the, the Pluto. You, you don't have to, I don't think, not all the time, but I, I like to do it because then just to make sure it's working okay. Now what I need to do is bring up SDR console. So this is the application we're going to use to literally use the narrow band. So as you can see here, the signals are actually quite weak. And that's because I think we're still on narrow band on the LMB. So let me just go back to the dashboard and as I change it from horizontal to vertical, these signals should get stronger. There we go. I'll move the dashboard out of the way because we don't actually need that at the moment. And one of the great things about SDR console is that it has a beacon lock. 
alles klar, dann weiß Bescheid. Alles Gute. Tschüss und schönen Dank. So what I can do now is I can click anywhere and, and, and talk. Obviously, what I need to do, I can click TX on SDR console, but it's not going to come out on the satellite because I haven't enabled the amplifier. So I'm going to click TX, got the power right down on here. I'm then going to click the driver on. Uh, and then when I unmute, you should be able to hear me. Testing, testing. Testing, testing. This is M0 DQW. M0 DQW. Testing, testing. Testing, testing. Uh, and there we go. I, that's narrow band on QA100. And I've got a QSO that I had earlier. So let me uh, play some of that for you. Um, yeah, I'm a spacecraft controller here in uh, for you to sat here in Paris. And uh, we work shifts. So uh, I work odd hours. Um, which uh, gives me time during the day to work DX and uh, what have you. But uh, yeah, it's nice to bump into you. Really nice to bump into you. Uh, so the project you're talking about is that uh, the big one where everything's incorporated, the ATV, the uh, narrow band, uh, I presume it's that one, which was one of your latest, I think, your latest vids. Uh, M0DQW, Fox 5, Victor, Mike, Juliet. Yeah, Fox 5, Victor, Mike, Juliet from Mike Zero Delta, Quebec Whiskey. Yeah, that's correct, uh, uh, Paul. It's, um, it, it's, that, it's that one, it, it's that, that project. So yesterday I was on the worldwide net doing the DATV and it was working very well. I did have a small issue with one of my drivers. I had a... I was using an SG Labs variable gain driver, and uh, it was uh, dis it wasn't giving me a very clean um, signal. I don't know if you use DATV, but um, it was giving me some shoulders, as, or what they call it, or regrowth on on the base of my transmission. So luckily, I had an AMSAT driver board to hand, uh, and I swapped that over after the net, and it's uh, and it's um, working quite well. From Fox 5, Victor, Mike, Julia. Um, yes, the, well, I'm looking at the uh, SDR console here, and uh, you're just slightly outside the uh, tram lines, um, but uh, you don't have um, a lot of, you know, your, 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 your straight, you know, your level. Well, there we go, guys. That was the last part in the build for the Ultimate QO100 transceiver for narrowband and wideband. If you enjoyed this video series, then let me know down in the comments below. And until the next video, stay safe, thanks for watching, and hopefully I'll see you on QA100.